I filed for divorce. Get out in a week. Bob was looking at me with a hateful gaze, holding hands with a woman standing next to him. He seems to be flaunting their closeness. Occasionally, they would intertwine their arms or goof around, making me wonder what I'm being shown. It was a sudden illness, but I was discharged from the hospital without issue. For some reason, Bob's name is missing from the official documents. I hurried home and unexpectedly, there was a woman I didn't know. I had heard that Bob took advantage of the company's welfare benefits to care for me. Using Kay giving leave for an affair, what kind of nerve does he have? He was always the type to discard things, whether they belonged to someone else or were unnecessary for his life. It seems he has decided to discard me as well. I never expected to be treated with such disdain while married. He thinks that he is the one who chooses and that he is absolutely right. Otherwise, he couldn't treat someone this horribly. However, I have already made moves so that Bob can't talk his way out of this. He's the only one who doesn't know anything. I'm Sarah, a caregiver working in a nursing home, and I'm turning 40 this year. After graduating from college, I worked as a salesperson for a while, but after I quit my job, I worked as a caregiver. I met my husband, Bob, when I was 35 through work. The cafeteria at the nursing home where I work is managed by an external company. The owner is very particular about the food, which is why extra care is taken with the meals for those we serve. Eating good food gives you the energy to live. That's the motto of the owner, who compared several companies before choosing the current one. It's a relief that a representative from the company visits our nursing home two or three times a month. Bob was in charge of the company that ran the cafeteria. Over his regular visits, we began to chat casually. Working for a food-related company, his daily life was meticulous, which attracted me. It's rare to see a single man living so neatly, which was refreshing. His day starts with favorite bakery bread and coffee and ends with a vegetable-rich dinner and relaxing with herbal tea. I'm surprised to hear that Bob lives so meticulously. I'm always in a rush. I'd like to learn from you. It's nothing special, just normal everyday things. Being able to do normal so well is what makes you Bob. Where should I start copying? Then I'd recommend herbal tea. I'll bring some for you to try next time. That herbal tea became a regular topic of conversation. The herbal tea Bob introduced me to was delicious, not just for health, but something I wanted to drink daily. Hi, Bob. The herbal tea you recommended last time was so good. I even bought some for myself. I think I can keep this up daily. That's great. That herbal tea has a calming effect. I thought it was perfect for you. A calming effect? You seemed tired, so I thought if your heart settled, your feelings might change. Bob's gaze was filled with kindness. I'm always looking after others, never myself. To have someone who sees me like this, I felt a happiness I had never known before. Ever since we first met, I've been curious about you, Sarah. I'm so glad we can talk like this. If it's all right with you, would you consider dating me? My answer was already decided. If you're okay with me, I'd be happy to. I've led a life that, by my own admission, hasn't been very remarkable. After college, I was hired by a company as a salesperson but couldn't achieve good sales figures, always getting yelled at. I'm called the company's burden, useless every day. 
I quit out of frustration. Then I happened upon a job at a nursing home. Working there, I realized the depth of caregiving and continued to study for my qualifications while working, even during night shifts. It was tough putting myself last while working so hard. I can't believe someone is watching me. Despite our busy schedules, we find time to spend together. Dates with Bob are usually simple things like shopping or movies, especially shopping for things we'll use when we live together in the future. Those moments feel so happy. How about we get matching Megs? We can use them when we start living together. Sounds good. I've actually been wanting a simple mug like that. That's great. Just thinking about living together makes me so excited. We gradually prepare things that we'll use when we're married and living together. Once, while sitting at a cafe during our shopping trip, Bob suddenly turns serious. What's wrong? You look so serious all of a sudden. Do you have a stomach ache? No, it's not. Don't push yourself. Should we call it a day? I can't wait any more. While shopping and thinking about living with you, I just couldn't contain my feelings any more. Will you marry me? As he said this, Bob gazed at me intently. In my whole life, have I ever felt as happy as I do at this moment? Yes, I'd love to. Oh good. I thought you might say no. I had no idea you were thinking about it so seriously. Today's been the most nerve-wracking day of my life. The tension that had been building suddenly broke, and Bob looked relieved. Well, the answer was already decided. Every day with Bob seems like it would be a happy one. And so, Bob and I got married. We both lived alone, but since Bob's apartment was quite spacious for one person, we decided to keep it. I brought only what I needed and moved into Bob's place to start our married life. It still felt like the meticulously kept home of a person who lives thoughtfully, just as Bob had described. I knew this from the numerous times I had visited Bob's apartment before. Everything was perfectly in order, not a speck of dust in sight. Thinking that our new life together was starting here made my heart trace. What kind of happiness awaits us from here? Little did I know, however, that the excitement and anticipation would soon be shattered. Six months into our marriage, I was preparing for a night shift at home. I usually take a midnight snack, my uniform, and a towel with me for night shifts, but I couldn't find some of my things. My tumbler, a recent gift from a friend that I really liked. I looked for my towel and tumbler, but for some reason I couldn't find them. Could Bob have accidentally taken them to work? But he will notice before he takes it. No matter how much I searched, I couldn't find them. So, I decided to use the spare doll in my locker and buy some tea at the convenience store on my way to work. I went to work as I had planned. Work went smoothly, as usual. I was eager to get home quickly, take a shower, and sleep in bed because I was so tired lately. And more than anything, I hadn't seen Bob much recently because of my night shifts, and I missed him. Rushing with those feelings, I hurried home. When I got home, Bob was in the living room, getting ready to go to work. As usual, he was pressing his favorite shirt with an iron. Hi, Sarah. Bob, good timing. There's something I want to ask you. Is that okay? Are you asking about the tumbler? I hadn't expected Bob to bring up the topic of the tumbler. Since he mentioned the tumbler, maybe he knows something about it. 
Yes, I can't find my tumbler and my towel. I looked for them before work, but I couldn't find them. Do you know anything about them? Oh, really? I thought I brought it from my old place. Well, I've already thrown it out. I couldn't believe Bob's words that he had clearly thrown it away. Why? There was no need to just throw things out without asking. Things need to be organized properly. He looked at me with a puzzled face, as if wondering what he had done wrong. I was shocked to learn that he had thrown it away without my permission. The tumbler was a birthday gift from an old friend, and because it was sentimental to me, I couldn't stay silent after hearing it was thrown away without my consent. Then Bob sighed while looking at me. Using such a tasteless thing, I didn't know that was your style, Sarah. I got rid of the stuff you don't need, and that's how you talk to me. It infuriated me that he could throw away my things and act as if he had done nothing wrong. However, I was so angry that I couldn't find the words to speak. Is that all? Well, I have to go now. By the way, Sarah, make sure you sort out your unnecessary things. Unnecessary things? What does he mean? I decluttered when we got married and moved into this house. It was supposed to be a new married life moving into Bob's house, which he had lived in alone, so I had carefully organized my belongings to not overwhelm the space. Realizing what Bob might mean, I decided to look around the house. Although I was exhausted and sleepy from my night shift, a bad feeling made both disappear. My suspicion was confirmed. Some items that should have come from my home were missing. Clothes, shoes, bags, and accessories that I had bought during my single years. I hadn't taken inventory of everything, but it looked like quite a bit had been thrown out. I can't believe he would dispose of other people's things. I had carefully selected and brought only the essentials for our new life together. Honestly, I don't have that many personal items, and it's not like they were cluttering up the place. And yet he threw them out. It appears that items with slightly bold colors or characters have been disposed of. Probably, he threw out things that didn't match his taste or the home's interior. If he had just told me, I would have considered whether to dispose of them myself. Why do it without asking? I was so shocked by the disposal of my important items that I couldn't move for a while. Maybe there's something wrong with me for not realizing earlier what kind of person he was, but still, there was no reason for him to dispose of them like that. I felt my head going blank from the shock. I don't know how long I sat there, but when I noticed, the outside was tinted with the color of the sunset. I had been sitting in shock ever since I got home and discovered that Bob had disposed of my things. I looked at the clock, and it was almost 6 p.m. Realizing that Bob would be home soon, I tried to stand up but felt dizzy. Honestly, I had no appetite, and I couldn't think of what to make for dinner. While I was dealing with this, Bob came home. I'm home. What have you been doing all day? Welcome back, Bob. I'm not feeling very well. Oh, really? What about dinner? He seemed interested in my condition as he took off his suit and sprayed it. Sorry, I'm not feeling well and have no appetite, so I haven't made anything. There's some meat marinated in sauce, though. Do you want it? That's fine. He responded grumpily and heavily sat down on the sofa to start fiddling with his phone. How long are you going to sit there? You're kind of in the way. His glare seemed to say I was a nuisance. It was hard to believe this was the same Bob who used to care about me the most. 
Maybe something unpleasant happened at work. Thinking this, I quietly decided to leave the room. Just then, Bob called out to me. Hey, are you just going to leave without saying anything? Don't you have anything to say to me? Until we got married, I thought his eyes were kind, but now they feel cold. As I felt the chill in his gaze, I replied, Well, sorry for not having dinner ready. I'm not feeling well, so I'm going to bed early. I realized too late that he was such an unkind person. Can I really live well with him from now on? That worry kept spinning in my head. Maybe it's because I have a lot on my mind, but I've never felt this sick before. I get dizzy easily now, and I'm always fighting nausea. Honestly, I can't work like this. On my days off, I spend all day in bed, and I'm barely making it to work. Even though I used to bounce back after a hard day's work, now I'm falling apart. The severe illness troubled me so much that I decided to consult at a major hospital. The cause wasn't clear, but I was admitted for testing because I felt so unwell. After several days in the hospital, the cause was still unknown, and my condition didn't improve, so my stay was extended. I was worried that Bob might be angry when he visited me in the hospital room. I'm sorry for causing trouble when you're busy with work, Bob. The cause isn't clear yet, but I'll get better soon, so please bear with me. Don't say sorry. I'll support you as much as I can until you get better. Bob had returned to the kind smile I saw before we got married. The Bob I sighed home recently must have been upset because of work or something. I reassured myself. Thank you. Okay, I have to go now. Oh, and I'll take leave for K giving a partner, so call me any time you need. After saying that, Bob went home. I remembered Bob once mentioned his workplace's welfare benefits, including time off for family care. I didn't get the details about how many days or the exact terms, but I remember thinking it's different with big companies. While I wanted him by my side because I felt vulnerable, this leave was a blessing since I might need him for various small tasks. I immediately contacted Bob to bring some things to the hospital, but all I got was his voicemail, no matter how many times I tried. Finding this strange, I went to sleep, but the next day, I couldn't get through to him again. It was definitely unusual, so I left a message, but it never got read. While feeling anxious, I continued my treatment to cure the mysterious illness. Thanks to focusing on treatment, I was able to be discharged about three weeks later. Even when I let Bob know I was being discharged, he still didn't read the message. Worried something might have happened to Bob, I was anxious. All I wanted was to get home as soon as possible. Before that, I remembered I needed to submit some documents. I feel like there was a document I had to submit at the city hall. It felt tough to do right after recovering and I was more worried about Bob, but it seemed too hard to go back later, so I stopped by the city hall on my way home. There was something off about the document issued at the city hall. It should have printed data for all family members, but strangely, only my name was on it. Since it was supposed to print data for both Bob and me, I had a bad feeling. Rushing home, I felt a presence in the house that wasn't Bob's. I smelled a perfume that Bob never uses as I entered from the front door. When I walked into the living room, there was Bob and a woman I didn't know. Who is this? As they turned around, smiling, the woman clinging to him spoke up. Is this the person Bob was talking about? Yo. 
But it's okay now. I had no idea what was okay. In that moment, part of me was bizarrely calm, like something out of a TV drama. I became dazed and accidentally dropped my bag. In the process, the documents I had gotten from the city hall fell out of the bag. I composed myself and decided to ask Bob something. Hey, who is this person? Also, when I got the documents from the city hall, only my name came up. Do you know anything about this? Bob replied with a smirk. I filed for divorce. For a moment, I thought I had misheard. But looking at Bob, it didn't seem like a joke. Wait, what do you mean, a divorce application? That's right. I don't need an extra burden. It's only natural to get rid of what you don't need. He snorted disdainfully and glared at me. I thought marrying you would make my life a bit easier. But that's not the case at all. Also, you're always sick and hospitalized with no clear discharge date, which is just too much trouble. That's true. I wouldn't leave Bob alone. It's best to let go of unnecessary belongings. You have one way to move out. Mary laughed hysterically. Mary is so kind. I really wish you could leave right now. As they spoke, they intertwined their hands. I couldn't understand what I was being shown. This was the house where I started living following my marriage to Bob, and I wondered what these two were trying to say. Bob threw my large duffel bag at my feet. My boss is old-fashioned, saying a man isn't really an adult until he's married. I just married because he said he'd give me a big project if I did. But I thought you married me because you loved me. I never said I loved you. I just thought you were an easy option for marriage. But if I'm going to date, it should be with someone pretty, right? Indeed, Mary was dressed like a modern, beautiful office lady. Her nails were neatly painted and her hair was stylishly curled. See, timing is everything. The person who can act quickly wins. So, when are you leaving? Bob looked at me, urging for an answer. So, Bob had snagged a reasonably attractive woman he often saw at work to improve his chances for a promotion and to impress his boss. It seems I was only needed as a wife and name for his career advancement and not truly loved. I understood Bob's feelings very well. Of course, my answer was clear. I'm leaving right now. With that, I left the house in three seconds. After my discharge, I had planned to stay at my parents' house in the neighboring town so I had already sent my daily necessities there. My work essentials were in my locker at work, so there were no issues. I stuffed the documents that were next to the table into my bag and left the house. The documents I put in my bag were from a detective agency and an envelope with Bob's company name printed on it. Then, I headed to a certain place. My destination was Bob's office. I had been there two or three times before for various reasons. Actually, mail from Bob's company had been forwarded to me. During my hospital stay, items that I had set up for mail forwarding were delivered to my room. The envelope addressed to me contained several forms necessary for family caregiving leave. It seemed they sent it because not only Bob had to fill them out, but as the care recipient, I had to complete some forms as well. I went to Bob's workplace to submit the documents directly. Bob's boss, who had thrown a celebratory dinner at the time of our marriage, happened to be there, so I handed them directly to him. He looked at me in surprise and repeatedly checked the white bod in the office. 
The white bod in the office had a big magnet labeled K giving leave, and below it was written return date undetermined. That meant, in Bob's office, he was known as the husband who was off work to care for his wife, whose return was uncertain. And here I was, the wife, all better and delivering documents in person, so naturally, he was surprised. Bob's boss asked me various questions, and I answered honestly. I talked about the reasons for my hospitalization, how often I received visits, and the details of the support I was supposed to get. Bob's boss looked at me with an expression that seemed to say he couldn't believe it. According to Bob's boss, the things Bob had told him were completely different from my report, and he was confused. However, after comparing the medical records and hospital receipts I submitted, along with the records of the days Bob had taken off, he seemed to believe that I was telling the truth. Then, I submitted another document. It was a document proving our divorce, and Bob's boss was speechless. If someone who claimed to have taken leave to care for his wife turns out to be divorced, the boss couldn't just stay silent. It seemed like the company decided it was no different from taking illegitimate leave, and he informed me that some form of disciplinary action was unavoidable. Indeed, what Bob had done was completely taking illegitimate leave. And on top of that, for an affair. Taking time off under false pretenses for an affair and filing for divorce without consent. There's no way I could forgive that. When I left Bob's workplace, I noticed dozens of missed calls from Bob. Wondering if he still had something more to say, I was about to put away my phone when Bob called again. Hey, you better not have said anything unnecessary. I wanted to retort at his opening remark, but I held back and replied, Unnecessary, like what? Whatever you say, everyone will believe me anyway. Don't get it twisted. Bob said so and hung up. Was that supposed to be a warning to me? He must be assuming that I wouldn't say anything excessive. I went to a law firm and consulted about the divorce and suing for damages for Bob's affair. I provided the evidence and information about the other party that I had previously obtained from a detective agency and decided to claim damages from both Bob and his affair partner. I couldn't let them get away with just taking the good parts and ignoring the rest. The lawyer worked quickly, and within a few days, Bob and his affair partner both received the documents for the claim for damages. I received panicked calls from both of them. Hey, what the hell are you doing? You're just the one who didn't get chosen by Bob. They were yapping like noisy puppies, making my ears hurt just by holding the phone. Just doing what's right. Did you really think this would end without anything happening? Sarah, always doing something extra. When did you know? Since when? Quite a while ago. No matter how much I work night shifts, it's strange not to see Bob for days on end. That is. Thought you wouldn't be suspected just by saying it's work? I'm the type who wants to know if something feels off, so I had it investigated. I could hear Bob breathing heavily over the phone, obviously angry. Investigated. You're a bastard. To think married but secretly meeting with an affair partner, and I hear she's someone from a company client. You marry is, and where she's from isn't your concern, and if anything happens to her, I won't forgive you. He seems to be out of his mind. He cannot understand the situation he is in now. And you have time to worry about others? Well, just stop causing trouble for everyone else, there was one more issue. Mary, Bob's affair partner, hadn't paid a dime in damages. 
Was she thinking that if she stayed silent, she wouldn't have to pay, or did she truly believe she wasn't in the wrong? Either way, I couldn't let this slide. Determined not to be walked over, I consulted my lawyer again. Ultimately, we decided to garnish Mary's wages. Once her wages were garnished, it must have become known at her workplace that she had been having an affair. Mary kept calling me. I didn't want to pick up the phone, but I didn't want to put off the hassle, so I took it. Hey, what were you thinking? Because of you. It looks like I'm going to get fired. Apparently, the affair and subsequent poaching had been exposed, and now Mary and Bob were both being pointed at behind their backs at work. Both Mary and Bob, though they worked in different places, were apparently being given the choice between transferring to a remote sales office or resigning. Well, if someone like you who cheats is around, it's bound to sour the workplace atmosphere, right? Just choose between transferring or resigning. No way. I'm not the type who can live in the countryside. If you hadn't meddled, I could have continued like this. You think you could have continued like this? I asked, feeling incredulous. Yeah. I could get married and Bob would be happy to marry me. And then we'd all live happily ever after. I felt a bit of pity for Mary. Knowing nothing may be a pity in a way. You seriously believe that? On what basis can you say he won't cheat again? If there's love, there won't be any cheating. You don't need to tell me that. Fine then. If my leftovers are good enough for you, go ahead. But don't think you can odds the damages. I said what I wanted to say and hang up on Mary's call. People who do such shameful things can't just happily move on. Thinking they could secure their own happiness after cheating is a big mistake. Rumor has it, both Bob and Mary are having a rough time. Stressed by being shunned at work, they fled their jobs by resigning. After resigning, their job hunt was complicated by the fact that word gets around fast, and their bad reputation had spread to surprising places. Naturally, no one was eager to hire someone known for cheating, and they seemed to be struggling to find work. About six months after the divorce, Bob called me. Hello, what now? Hey, could I possibly work at your place? I've got nowhere left to work, and I keep getting rejected everywhere, making life unsustainable. Because you've done something wrong, haven't you? I was thinking, maybe I could work for your place. I was flabbergasted by his audacity. Maybe I could work for your place? Don't joke around. You should finally realize that this is all your own fault. Then Bob hung up. I had never spoken to Bob so bluntly before, not during our relationship or our marriage. Finally saying what I really thought felt liberating. Since then, I've continued to work at the nursing home. After spending some time at my parents' house post as judge, I've returned to work and am enjoying living alone again. I find my job at the nursing home constantly engaging because there's always something new to learn. It's exciting because today is the only day, even if you've been working for a decade or so. One day, I received a promotion offer. They had noticed my commitment and wanted me to lead my colleagues as a chief. I had never held a leadership role before, so I felt both happy and a bit overwhelmed by the sudden offer. However, it was an opportunity I wanted to embrace and give my best. Additionally, the results from my caregiving certification exam came back, and I passed on the first try. With this certification and my promotion, living alone won't be a problem financially. 
I want to believe in my potential and keep challenging myself.